Hey, this is Robert of Mayflower Bookshop, mayflowerbookshop.com. And today what I would like to share is something about meditation. What is the deepest, purest, truest reason to meditate? And how do you meditate? The simplest way of meditating is just doing it. We need the direct experience. What is meditation? Meditation is sitting up straight, comfortably, being comfortable, but sitting up straight so that you have this kind of vertical relationship in your spine and in your awareness of the earth below and the sky above, the heavens above. You see, when we meditate, we sit up straight and we listen with our heart. What are we listening to? We're listening for everything to stop. What is the purest form of meditation? I wish I had enlightenment. I wish I was free. I wish I was all knowing. I wish I was a little bit knowing. <laughs> I wish I was here. I wish I mattered. <clears throat> I wish that I could be a spiritual spirit or a soul. Meditation is learning to still the mind within the listening heart. And what are we listening for? We're listening for the subtle goodness, a subtle true being and becoming and being again within ourselves and each other. Why meditate? I don't think it takes much to take a look at the news or take a look at the world around you, the quality, the breath of the world around you, the thinking of the world around you. It doesn't take much. You just look at the world around you and it seems the world's having trouble. People are suffering without learning much from it, without growing from it. People are getting beat up in a way. People want things that they think will make them happy. And sometimes it works, but a lot of times it doesn't. I talked to somebody the other day and they said that twice they had gotten everything that they wanted. Everything. And they listed a lot of things. Inner and outer things. But they still weren't happy. Do you feel like you're missing something? If there was just something here, you'd be a little happier? What's missing from our lives that would give us total meaningfulness, a, a, a meaning and purpose, and a creative, co-creative happiness? Is happiness more to do with A sense of being co-creative with our inner and outer world? Is happiness, does happiness come from a sense of growing and learning, a sense of more? Maybe, but what I'm proposing is that we may not know who we are and what would make us happy. And so at some point in our life, each of us deserves to get to know ourselves. We, get, we deserve to get to know who we are. And I'm suggesting that, that getting to know who we are has to do with 
stepping back and learning to be still and it's not enough just to be still because perhaps we think we're being still and bored at times and even sleeping and we're still I'm talking about being still and awakened from the heart mind stream root that in the heart we can discover a stillness that holds it all and continually learns to find meaning and purpose in co-creative play with our world, a working relationship of self to the world around us. Consider happiness as finding the silence within ourselves that is like a little bit of a garden and a protection and <clears throat> a creative polarity with the ever-moving, quickening, spinning world around us. Scientists claim that the Earth is slightly spinning faster than in the past and that all the planets are going through some kind of interesting change and nobody quite knows where it's all going. Are we spiritual beings that can survive? Survive death, birth, survive an ever-changing form. Are we spiritual beings that reincarnate and experience karma as a correction learning process? <clears throat> karma as eventually fixing everything and transforming it into dharma. <laughs> The potential for creative learning and fun and interplay and friendship with all life. So I'm suggesting that meditation, if you haven't experienced it yet, is sitting up straight and having a profound silence and listening experience with one's heart. One hears one's inner depth, one, he one attunes to one's inner space, quietude. And sometimes to get that inner space, to get that ability to sit still, sometimes we need to go exercise or do yoga first or walk a couple miles or at least walk until you're a little bit tired. You know, do gardening work, clean the house. Or is it the first thing in the morning? When you first wake up, you sit up straight and you go back to sleep while you're listening and awakening in your heart. They had, <clears throat> and the the appetites for doing things. Quiet down and listen in the heart. We're listening in the heart for like the secret of life, the secret of success, the secret of the rose, the root, the sky, the day-to-day, month-to-month, year-to-year, lifetime-to-lifetime experience. There's such a thing, there's such a thing as moving meditation. And I think a lot of us accidentally, consciously or unconsciously do that. Moving meditation has a sense of wholeness and unity and belonging and participation, sense of moving. One can experience quite a, a lot and a sense of wholeness and holiness by how one breathes and thinks and moves. But the meditation that this world really needs is radical stillness that can distill one's experience and one's knowledge into the elixir of wisdom and insight that will create a capacity for greater involvement or greater uninvolvement if we're stuck on stuff. 
truly meditation by listening in the heart and being still is freedom from the separate self, freedom from the anxiety of the world, freedom from the pressures of the world. It's true that once we discover our inner stillness and our inner good, true, and beautiful, it's true that there's something inside of us that's really wonderful and that it, it's in everyone. There's something very beautiful in everyone at a deep, deep level, at the minimum at a deep level. Some people have flushed out or fleshed out or flowered out their, some of their greatest, some of their best qualities into um, participating with the world in such a way that the world is enhanced and bettered by their presence, their workings, their breath and mind. But I think Rudolf Steiner is right when he says that no matter how good we are, whatever we do, after we die, we'll always wish we could have done better because the because it, I, I think because the earth is so troubled. So my point here is that every day for three to five minutes, the world necessity and the situation of the world calls upon us to sit still and take a, let go of our breath and take a deep breath of the whole of our life and the whole of every life. A deep breath into our space and our silence and let go of our breath while we're still sitting in our heart. We're well seated in the heart soul in the spirit of good, true, in the spirit of beauty and love and truth. Each day we sit still in our heart. If our thoughts come, when my thoughts come, I think, please give me enlightenment so I can help all those who suffer. And who do I address when I say, Please give me enlightenment so I can help all those who suffer. I'm addressing the stillness deeper yet within myself and I'm addressing the universe around me. In some ways, the whole world around us is the Great Mother. The whole world around us mothers our experience. The great world around us is love. And all the troubles we see in the world around us are how far we have yet to go to create friends and family and love and a sense of belonging and unity, a unifying principle that permeates. So one can see that you, you can get lost in this idealism and creative imagination and then the practical necessities of the troubles people have with bills and toxins and health and sense of self, family, friends, learning, love, work, relationships, death and taxes, higher learning, calling, friends, commitments. There's a lot to do. And unless we can break from all the moving, take a break, and have this stillness, at the same time we have this sense of uh, universal love, we have this kind of truth. The truth within each one of us has not yet spoken. It's a voice that is forever silent and that only our silence can fathom and reckon what the other silence is saying, the great silence. Within each one of us is a pure stillness that's deeper than the pleasure and pain. It's like in Star Trek, space, the last frontier. It's inner space. It's inner space. 
that can hold everything and hold nothing. It's freedom from the known and freedom from the self. It's the only place we have that peace of mind can truly come. If we look, if we look at the world around us, it's mothering us and we're mothering it. We're nourishing or not nourishing it. And what are we nourishing in each other and in the world around us? The hope of the future, <laughs> love and truth, a greater sense of wholeness, learning. If learning doesn't learn to love the earth and purify the water and air and the food and learn to transform weapons into garden tools, if learning doesn't learn how to be creatively happy and touch the eternal and be touched back, there's kind of like a, a, a fierce fear and paranoia that comes. The, the fear comes from clinging to the perishables and knowing that things aren't going to last and not having the experience of silence. The space within us in the silence kind of never dies, you know. It, it never gets totally born. It's, it's an infinite potential. So it's, it's kind of impossible to say everything. It's impossible to put spiritual truths into words. The hermetics, the hermetic philosophy and the hermetic way of learning and looking at it is that at the very best, we can only share half-truths. I can present to you that meditation is learning to be still, but it's also learning to be threefold. It's learning that I'm sitting between an inner world of stillness and space and an outer world of time and motion and ever-changing birth and death and rebirth. And that the true nature of the self is, is to sit still between the stillness, sit still and learn between the moving and unmoving, the time and space, to awaken a sense of awareness, a greater participation. And this, in effect, is the teaching of the great mother and father, the great matter and spirit, moving and unmoving, to awaken a mind stream continuum, I call it, in my book, Hermetic Rosicrucian Grail Tarot, and astrology, astrological aspects, the art book, that this is the middle way of Buddha and the Christ between the murderer and the thief. The middle way, the heart between sense-bound thinking and action that's unconscious. The hermetic way of understanding things is that I can, even if I, even if I somehow set all this perfectly for you and you really got it, you have to make it your own and make it come alive. You have to find your own words and ways of expressing. Or perhaps you can use mine as training wheels of the bike, the two-wheel bike, before the rider is sitting between the two wheels of spirit and matter. But hermetics is half revealed and half concealed because no matter what the great spiritual truth is, I have to leave you free to discover it for yourself and how it works in your everyday life. That's part of the problem because a lot of people have authority and not self-evident truth. Rudolf Steiner's philosophy of freedom, H.P. Blavatsky's <clears throat> writings on Buddhism and hermetics, Isis Unveiled book, her secret doctrine, her voice of the silence, Steiner's foundations of esotericism, outline of esoteric science, Rosicrucian wisdom. These are really important books to, for more ways, the, the hermetic, Christian, theosophical, Buddhist approach. There's Gaelic Rinpoche and his teachings out of Ann Arbor, Jewel Heart. Manly Hawes, Secret Teachings of All Ages, gives you a very good look at the Neoplatonic, Hermetic, Gnostic, philosophical systems that are in within alchemy and astrology and Kabbalah and every form of outer 
ritual and romance of spiritual knowledge. So I wanted to share with you, because we can ne- it seems like we can never get enough because the world's like always seems to getting worse in some areas and better in other areas. And I want to talk about meditation and the importance of three to five minutes a day of radical stillness. The stillness will digest your experience and your knowledge into a new insight to deal with today and tomorrow. And by sitting still and listening with one's heart, like you know about the third eye, or if thine eye be single, thy whole body is filled with light, like it says in the Christian Bible, or the Eastern Bibles of the single eye or the third eye. We know about that, right? But what I've discovered with my own higher self, my angelic inklings, (laughs) what I discovered was the third ear, the single ear of the heart. The word heart spells here and ear and the, the same letters spell earth. If someone says, are you on the earth? Are you being practical? They, they implies. I think practicality is that you're coming from your heart. That you're coming from the earth, the heart, and the inner hearing that can hear the suffering of the whole world or any particular and can hear the striving and struggle to be free and enlightened and happy, that we can hear the music or lack of music in the spiritual soul of every person, every plant and mineral, every animal, bird. These aren't just ideals. You can read Emerson, who was friends with Abe Lincoln, hung out at the White House, Emerson has a thing on the oversoul and self-reliance and the history of the natural history of the intellect. There's many places that we can nourish our intelligence and heart stream. It's imperative that if we want world peace and the world's not going to be destroyed in apocalyptic fever and ignorance delusion, and unnecessary suffering. It's imperative, I believe, and I'm sharing with you, that each one of us has a gift that nobody else can give to this planet. Each one of us, by being still and meditating for three to five minutes a day, but it has to be every day. I think that the world situation calls upon us to go direct to God in all the teachings in the Bibles and the scriptures and the holy books that we've read and the metaphysical, spiritual books we've read and all the experiences we've had and that we know other people have had, that we can bring this into our silence and distill it into a sense of a spiritual artist, a spiritual warrior, a spiritual mom or dad, a spiritual brother and sister to all that live. That we would invoke our own stillness that goes beyond our separate self. In ancient India, the only sin was acting out of separateness. The sin was like the moon that reflects the sunlight but doesn't Like the earth can bring in the transformation. The the earth can bring in the sun and the experience and transform it into a garden. And only in our stillness, three to five minutes a day, if you just do it every day for at least a month, I think you'll see results. If you don't, let me know and maybe I can help you out with a couple more ideas. But unless you make it your own, meditation does not exist. Each one of us has a gift that nobody else can give. And I challenge you to discover what that gift is. That gift that keeps giving and will ever return to you good luck and grace and a beautiful life. So I hope you can meditate three to five minutes a day. There's a nice book by McDonald called How to Meditate. Um, All the people I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of books on meditation, but 
unless you sit still for three to five minutes and distill your experience and your learning and everything that I've said, we need to like distill it into a new vision and hope and activity that will bring peace to not only ourselves and our friends, but to the world around us. So I'll join you in that silence and I'll join you and find you in the ever moving, changing world and in the awakening awareness. The awareness is different than consciousness, you know? Consci it's, not, it's consciousness without object, you might say. The consciousness with object or, or seed is, I wish I had enlightenment, I bless everyone who suffers. Be still and know. But the actual experience of stillness that can feel and sense the heart of every man and woman, of every living thing, I think it's automatic that when we learn about each other, we automatically have compassion and a sense of genuine love, appreciation, awakening awareness, and wow. When we get to know how all life is interconnected and yet independently striving, Wow, when we realize the great, that love is the glue that holds the universe together. Wow. When we realize that each one of us has a direct line to the universal mind, the universal stillness, the universal process of ever going and coming back. Wow. So maybe this is the wow meditation. When you, when you really experience your own stillness and other people's stillness, like a lot of people have relationships at work and love and family and friends, and they move together. But to rest in each other in this awakening stillness, wow. To rest in this infinite potential that forever speaks from the silence. Wow. Wow. I have, I think I have five talks on the voice of the silence. It's kind of, and there's a lot of other talks on meditation. If you have the wish and will and the spunk, you know, go through my different talks and borrow the different ideas that spark you and quiet you to this deeper sense of meditation and spiritual awakening. So with that, I bid you adieu, talk to you down the road, and may your heart flower. This is Robert of MayflowerBookshop.com. At your higher self service. <laughs>